نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الكريم أما بعد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in a famous hadith mentioned about the time after his blessed departure from this world he said there will be Nubuwa which was his time and then Khilafa Lamin Hadil Nubuwa Khilafa which is the guided Khulafa maintain and that would be according to some narrations for up to 30 years or so and then there would be Mulukiya the kingdom based on Rahma the kingdom which is based on Rahma and mercy and after that there will be the oppressing kingdom and that's where the dynasties would come into from after the time of Sayyidina Abu Abi and Umar bin Abdul Aziz so after that they have become a bit more in the first century when it passed the Sahaba almost left about 110 and whatever close to that time then the people they started obviously getting weaker and weaker the government officials the dynasties that became a family in a rule to Banu Umayyah initially and then Banu Abbas and this is how it carried on and uh, we needs to be careful though by generalizing or over generalizing everything but when we say Khulafa al-Rashidun the rightly guided Khalifa the first four Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar Farooq, Sayyidina Uthman Ghani, Sayyidina Ali Radiyah These four are the rightly guided Khulafa of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam They did not deviate even the smallest possibility and carried on in accordance with the teaching of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam After that, there has been little bit change, not as strong they were as Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali yet they were still upon the truth like Sayyidina Abu Abi Radina Talanu, the companion Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz Rahmatullahi Sayyidina Hassan before Sayyidina Abu Abi as well Radina Talanu but in, the, in between there was Abdullah bin Zubair Radina Talanu so they were fantastic and rightly guided people and then there was Yazid as a uh, you know, well off in between, who obviously was not rightly guarded. In fact, he is the one who did a lot of oppression during his time. But then Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he, he wasn't a Sahabi. Yazid wasn't a Sahabi either. But he was Tabi, both of those. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz actually brought Islamic. you know, journey towards the Sunnah way again whatever was the deviation created by Yazid and his likes it actually was tracked back onto the right way, Alhamdulillah and then subsequently it became more of a family or dynasty style ruling the masses which was a problem obviously but remember that they were still they're not likened by any means to the current current rulers of the world muslim rulers and non-muslim rulers they were really more good than they had some bads the majority of them were really quite seasoned scholars and they had a lot of practice so we see they were in between some tyrants as well and Obviously, they had their personal interest uh, as well, which they were quite keen on to maintain. And unfortunately, there were some who actually went against the teachings of Islam and oppressed the people using hadith and using certain facts, but for their personal gain, with the wrong understanding. And that's where the trouble continued. But remember, after the first four, 
there was no scholar who was the best of the time, the imam of the time, and yet he was in government as well. So the scholars were there, the best of the best were there, but they were not rulers. Then we had this two-pronged approach. Somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it like this, that the rulers would be different, and that's a different line, and the scholars would be on a different path. They would not join the government. They would advise them. They would, you know, even rebuke them whenever there's a need. And uh, by and large, the leaders would listen to them, accept that. And sometimes they would go against if they were tyrants and more oppressive. So the likes of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmed, Rahimahumullah, and they would have to go through some oppression from them. Jamilab and Jibar, Hajjad was one of the tyrants of the time, and so they tortured these great Imams, Imam Moon as well. So anyway, so they were there were people in between who would use their powers against some scholars. But Islam on its own remained completely intact throughout 1400 years. There was no time in the history where Islamic teaching were not preserved by the scholar. Then that make it easy to understand because many people nowadays try to distort the fact and give the idea, you know what? Islam was only practiced for the first 30 years or so, and that's wrong. That's completely wrong and misguided. May Allah give us tawfiq to understand.